Coming up today on That LTD Life, one of the most elusive tools of all is the CRM. It's very difficult to find a good one, especially one that doesn't cost you tens of thousands of dollars per year. So if you could get a good CRM for a one-time cost, that would be amazing. Well, we're gonna find out today if that comes true as I test out Clippy. My name is Dave, by the way, I'm from clientamp.com and I review a new lifetime deal every single day of the week. I'm gonna be showing you around this tool, telling you what I like and what I dislike, if this is not a sponsored video, I will be giving you my honest opinion and you can decide whether or not you think it's a good fit for your business. If you want to support me and you do think that Clippy is a good fit or you just want to look for anything else over at AppSumo, I'm supported by your clicks with the link in the description. All right, onwards, let's check out Clippy. Now, first of all, I got to say that it's kind of brave of them to call it Clippy. Anyone my age or maybe even a little bit younger will remember a very different Clippy that we don't think of so fondly. So beyond intellectual property issues, is Clippy actually any good? Well, I will tell you that you need to actually be using either Microsoft or Google to even utilize it since it doesn't work with any other platforms, including standard SMTP mailboxes. So myself as a non-Googler or Microsofter was a little disappointed to find that out upon launching. It is on the deal page, but I didn't check that out. I just clicked the buy button like any good LTD addict. So the first thing you'll do when you create your own Clippy account is link up to your Gmail or Microsoft account. Of course, it can be Google Workspace as well. And then it's gonna pull in all of your data, your contacts, your emails, and any incoming data in the future will also be brought into Clippy so that you can keep track of it in the CRM functions. I ended up connecting a burner account up and I don't have much in there. So if I go over to my people, you'll see I've got just a single user here that comes from Gmail. This one I added manually. If we click on this, you can see the emails do actually show up and I can click in and read them, but you don't reply here. This is not a tool that's going to replace your main email inbox. But now we found ourselves inside of the CRM. I'm under sales hub and people, and I'm looking at this contact right here, which doesn't have a name and I'm looking at the email. So let's back up a step here. We'll go back to all people and I can click on any of these contacts and I'm gonna see my latest interactions with them on the main area of the screen. And on the right-hand side, I'll see their profile. So any information I've populated here or was coming in from my email application would show up on the right-hand sidebar. Now this interaction section is kind of nice. So let's say you meet up with a client for coffee or they message you on WhatsApp. You can log all of that inside of the CRM. Just go to add interaction. At the top here, you can choose which type of interaction you had. So let's say it was a coffee meeting, right? We'll just say that, then we give it a name. And then you can document what happened here. I can just type away anything that happened. I wanna point out this is using the Lexical editor from Meta. This is an open source editor. We see all over the place on lots of different tools. This is my favorite editor. I definitely like this one the most. So I'm happy to see this in here. It's got the slash command so I can do things like headings, bullet lists, you get the point here. Okay, so I'm gonna log my interaction and it's gonna show up right here and I can see the time that it was actually added. I do think the interaction screen could be spruced up a little bit. Like for example, the icon here is very, very small and not very obvious as to what it's alluding to. I mean, looking at that icon, do you know what it means? Probably not. Uh, but if you cl click on it, you then very clearly becomes, oh, that's supposed to be email and you know, this is the type of interaction I'm choosing from. So maybe a label here would clarify that. The other thing is that they should specify a date and time over to the right. Now I know it says date, but there's no way to say the time that it happened. And when I actually save the actual interaction, like we saw a moment ago, it does specify a time. So why can't I add that in manually? All right, so we've seen interactions and we've seen emails. The last option over here is follow-ups. And this is obviously pretty important. This is stuff that you need to do. So I can add a follow-up in, very similar type of interface to what we've seen before. You give the follow-up a title, add a description, and then you're gonna set a due date so that you actually make sure you follow up on time. Now you can assign these follow-ups to particular team members. Now right now I have not added any team members, so I'll assign it to myself. I can also assign the follow-up to be related to a specific deal, which we've not talked about deals yet, but we'll get there momentarily. I've got one deal I created called the new deal, and I'm gonna go ahead and assign this task to that deal. And finally, even though this follow-up is currently assigned to my contact over here, I can also link it up to a company. So if I was working with a particular company, I could assign it there. Now I'll create my follow-up, and here it is right there, call Jim. 
Now notice that it also displays Jim's profile information over here. So if I had saved his phone number, it'd be very easy to actually make the call. Okay, so we've been exploring the people section, but the company section is essentially the same thing. It's just gonna be able to involve multiple people. So here's what I mean. Clicking on companies, I'll go into the company we've been working with, which is Duplac. I'm gonna click on them, and you're gonna see here all of my interactions related to everybody. So if I had multiple people that I worked with at Duplac, any of their interactions would show up under the company interactions. Same thing for emails and follow-ups. They'll all be grouped together into the company. That just makes sense, right? That's a good way to organize a CRM. Company is the organization, and then we have the people that belong to that company. The people that belong to the company, by the way, is specified right here under Teams, and we can easily add new people by just clicking on Add Person. Okay, so heading over to the Deals page, which is essentially our pipeline. This is a Kanban system where you can enter in your deals and move them through the different columns in your Kanban system. Adding in a new deal is very easily. Just click on the stage where you're currently at. So if it's a lead, you'd start over here. If you're already in proposal, but you didn't put them into the CRM, shame on you, but you can do it right here. Just add the deal name, assign it to a company, choose your point of contact, give it a value, and set a projected close date if you wish. Then hit create, and here we go, we've got our new deal. Now you'll notice that in any of the deals, there is a lot of parameters here listed out. If this is too much for you, you can actually hide them over here where it says view settings, and we can simply just hide the different options. Now you can't add any additional ones, but if you want to add the ones that you just removed back, there is an add column option, which simply shows the other attributes that you've already hidden. Now, as long as we're talking about adding and hiding certain attributes, I'm a little bit miffed that I'm stuck with this pipeline and I don't believe I can customize it at all. It's a pretty big pipeline. Let's close that out. Now you can see that there's a lot of stages up here and there's no way to remove items. I thought these plus buttons would maybe add in a new stage, but they don't. They actually serve the exact same function. Let me get out of this. They serve the exact same function that the add to list button does. So a little bit of redundancy here, I suppose, if you already have a card in that stage, well, then this button will become a little bit more handy. But yeah, overall, a little disappointing here. I can't relabel these. I can't change their color. Yeah, I'm just kind of stuck with the pipeline that they've assigned. Now on the main dashboard, you can actually see that pipeline and they show you how many cards are in each part of the pipeline or how many deals are in each stage. Uh, so I've got one in approach and one in proposal right now. 50-50 because I've got two deals. Uh, I think that's a little bit of a confusing way to convey that information. Maybe helpful if you have got hundreds of active deals, but I think for most of us that might be using this tool, we probably don't have you know more than a dozen deals going at any given time that are in like the prospecting stage and you've not actually closed them. So it might be nice to have the option to just toggle between like numbers and percentages. I think that could be ideal. Also showing values here, right? So maybe you got three deals with a total value of, you know, 20,000 in approached, but uh, you know, you get the point here. It could be a lot more valuable, this dashboard view, just to kind of get an overall sense of where your business is at. But that is the sales hub. That is the, in my opinion, the heart of any CRM is the actual sales pipeline and how you get information in and out. And here it's done through email. You can't have anything out, but it can come in through email and then you can organize it here for your sales team to take care of. Now, there are three more components to this tool, two of which I find fairly interesting and one is just kind of, oh, that's there. Let's start with that one, the more boring one. Chat assistance, there's ChatGPT built in here. It's basically just an agent to use ChatGPT. It, it doesn't seem to be trained on your data or really serve much function other than to prevent you from going to chatgpt.com. So that exists. You can add a new one here if you want. Choose between GPT 4.0, 01 Mini, or a web search. All right, so that was one of three features. Let's go to the second one. We've got meetings here. This is kind of cool. At first I was like, oh, did they build an entire meeting platform? That's a big undertaking. But no, no, they did not. Instead, the way this works is we can create a new meeting here. You give the meeting a title, set the date and time, add your participants, connect a company and a related deal if you like, and give it a description. And then it automatically creates a meeting for you using Google Meet or I suppose Microsoft Teams if you've connected with that. I didn't do any connection to Google Meet other than my initial mail setup, so 
that's where this integration must have taken place because it is a legit meeting that is ready to go. I can click to join it and you know, I'll be off and running. Now, the real powerful thing about this is they've got a little AI bot that comes to the meeting, takes notes, and then is available to you back over inside of Clippy as an interaction. You do have a set number of minutes that you get depending on the plan you choose from AppSumo. So I'm on the baseline, you know, bottom of the barrel plan, and I get 320 minutes per month. So you can see here, tier one, 320 meeting recording minutes per month, and that scales up pretty quickly. Tier two goes all the way to 1500, and by the time you're at tier, tier three, you get 7,000 minutes. I do think they're missing an opportunity here to have a booking module so that people can actually schedule with you, but I suppose you can just use the platform that comes with Google. However, you know, if you're in a meeting and you want to schedule another meeting or you're in your email, yeah, it, it just seems like this is close to being a complete solution, but kind of like the email where I can receive emails, but I can't send them out. I could book a meeting, but I have to do it from this interface. I can't have someone do that for me. Last feature to talk about is the knowledge base, which is a little bit of a strange feature to include in a CRM pipeline type of tool. But the way that this works is if something, it needs to be documented, maybe a process or a sales procedure, you could create a document here that you could keep internal or you could share it with your team. So you can see uh, right now I'm sharing this little note here. I've not added anything to it, but let's say this was the key to the golden goose, all of my top sales secrets. I could document them here and then easily share them with the rest of the team. Of course, I could keep items to be completely private as well. You can see it moving back and forth between the shared library and my private library. So right now it's in private and now it's back in shared. There is voice note recording as well. So if you don't like typing, you can go ahead and tap to record. It's gonna ask for permission for your mic. Hey, so I'm just testing out the voice recording capabilities. Let's see how this works. All right, so I've finished recording and now I've got my voice recording over here and I can go ahead and ask AI about it or I can view the transcript. So here you go, that's the transcript, pretty cool. There is an add note button right here, but if I click on it, it's actually adding something in the background but not closing the modal. So um, I think it's just adding the transcript to my overall note over here, but it's a little bit of a weird interface. The ask AI button, by the way, just lets you add a prompt here or use one of their presets like summarize. So if you had a long voice note, you can go ahead and summarize it. And of course you can make your voice notes private or public as well with the same little dropdown. So that's Clippy. Let's go ahead and check out the plans and pricing. With tier one, that's the tier I've been using to make this video, you get three seats, one sales email account. So that's important. You don't get an email for each seat. It's a single shared email across the entire account. If you want more than that, you can go up to tier two, you'll get 10 and three emails. And on tier three, you'll get 30 and 10. I think that's kind of weird. I wish there was an email account for every single seat. Uh, it does seem like a little bit of a shortcoming and I don't really understand why. I know some people use role-based emails for their sales accounts, but I think it's a lot more common to have personalized emails for everybody who's doing sales. So I think those numbers could be evened up. I'm not gonna be you know, fighting for higher limits here, but just an observation. Now, in terms of when you connect up your email accounts, it's going to import previous contacts, which is good, that's what you want, but there is a limit based on the plan that you buy. So three months, six months, and unlimited, depending on which tier you choose. Oh, there's also this feature called record enrichments to go ahead and fill in the profile of the people that you add. So if you don't have all of the contact info, it's gonna try to find it for you. You get 250 of those on tier one, 1,000 on tier two, and 3,000 on tier three. Now, the contact enrichment is not something that happens in the user interface. That happens when the contact is imported from your email. So there's nothing to see or do over inside of the contact section. On tier one, you're limited to 10,000 contacts. That goes to unlimited on tier two. And then we get 500 AI agent automations per month versus 2,500 versus unlimited. And of course, we already talked about the meeting minutes. That scales up rather quickly. So Clippy is trying to walk a very difficult line. They want a simple and easy to use CRM that is full featured, but not too full featured, which is obviously going to cause some people to say, this is not right for me. Certainly opinionated software is out there and a lot of people love it. Just look at Basecamp. A lot of people love that tool. A lot of people hate it, but something like Clippy is not too different. Like for example, I wasn't happy about the stage names. I thought they were too long and there was too many of them. I can't get rid of them, so I just gotta kinda live with it or you know, hope they change in the future. 
That is what you get when you have opinionated software. CRMs are notoriously difficult to use, so I think opinionated versions of them is the right approach. It's just we need enough of them so you can find the right one for you. Overall, I like Clippy a lot. I'm gonna go ahead and give this one a 7.4. It's got room for improvement, but in terms of being a functional CRM, it's there and the price is definitely right. If you wanna grab a copy of Clippy yourself, I've got a link in the description. Of course, I'll be hanging around in the comments section, so hit me up with any questions or comments there, or even just an emoji for the algorithm. If you liked the video, go ahead and hit the like button. My name is Dave, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next review.